Let's have a look at the Nasdaq. So the Nasdaq had a little pop to the upside today uh, off of the back of the news. So the news that come out is inflation is at 3.3%. So when I say that, I said it's at 3%. It's, it's after slowing down. So the increase in inflation is only 3%. So as of as of this time last year in the US, it was something like almost nine percent. I actually forget the forget the actual data on it. So that's what that's what happens here, and that's what this sort of rally on the, the stock market is. That's why this is now kicked up to the upside. Uh, so we've had a little bit of a, a run on this, and well, look, let's see let's see if that run continues. Let's see in the final hour. Does that final half an hour does it does it close there? Will it will it close above this? Will it close above this high? Because that's that's what we want. We want it to run. We want it to take off. We want it to pop to the upside. And um, would I have taken that long? Mm, no, no, I wouldn't have. And um, even though there is a potential trade there off that twenty moving average, I didn't I didn't jump in on the likes of the uh, the S and P. I just didn't. I didn't look. Good enough for me. It didn't give me enough of a setup. There wasn't enough risk to reward on us here, so there wasn't. There was a whole heap of things that I wasn't happy with. Now, some people took that, uh, and the the funny comment that I that I read in the, sort of the Discord is that even a blind squirrel um finds a nut every so often. So one of the guys, um, in the profit showcase. Um, made some proper running trades, so I thought it was quite funny. Um, but the idea here is is that we make sure that we're doing things correctly, you're meeting sort of your rules and so on and so forth. So for me, it just didn't. I didn't have the upside on this one. S and P again, the S and P. So we still have this original trade opens here. It's come back phase two popped up. Now, in this particular trade, I would probably be moving my stop loss underneath here if I was, um, if I was, if I was uh, looking to amend this trade. If I don't think there's enough upside there, I'd be moving my stop loss underneath here. So at least the bank in half a percent. And let me see if I put that underneath there. Yeah, five point five two. No, our our take profit is just underneath that, so one point six seven. Um, so again. We still have that trade running. I wanted to come back down to here. Didn't quite. The come back to there would have taken it. Yes, there is this 20 moving average that we're bouncing off of. Yes, there is a low test there. Yes, there was a setup there. But again, this would have a little more upside than the NASDAQ because it was actually making higher highs. And um, so this one actually was a better setup than the NASDAQ. And if you'd have taken that, you have probably one and a half to one up on this particular trade that you've taken it. So well done, anyone who took the S and P five hundred. The Dow, look, funnily enough, the Dow. If this trade hadn't been left alone, it came down, double bottom, and then popped up here again. So anyone who took this trade, well done. Went to a one to one. It went up a little bit higher. Went up to one point two seven, and then it retraced there a little bit. But if you'd have taken that, well done. If you'd have taken this trade here, would have been would have been a little more aggressive. Um, it was valid entry there, stop loss here, and again identical trade. You would have hit a one for one on it. Um, so well done on that. If you'd have taken that, so out of the three of them, the S and P was probably the better one. Then the then the the Dow here, and then the last one would be the Nasdaq. But the Nasdaq for me had the least value on it. UK 100, so we had a little a little bounce off that. Bounce, bounce, and look, it's done exactly what we expected to do, to come back into this area. It's done 100% of what we wanted it to do. If you'd have taken that or traded that long off that level, you would have hit probably a two to one if you'd done that. Well done, maybe a one to one, depending on where you put your stop loss. So I love it when, when trades do exactly what we wanted to do. Um, it's just a matter of, whether you actually pull the trigger, not on it. That's what it's that's what it comes down to. Uh indeed, whether you, you pull the trigger on it or not, basically. Now we have our sort of break and retest there. We look at this, it's there's the bounce, 
it's broke and then there's a retest so there is a potential short there absolutely there's a short here but the problem is is that the the news here or the or the movement here to the upside is pretty damn aggressive it's pretty damn big so then the question then is is that do we take this then as a short if i'm looking at the level yes there's a bounce there but it's broken 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 rejection there and is it is it a rock hard level no it's not has it been broken yes has it been um rejected yes as well okay so we do have bounce and then retest so we have to go drop down to the smaller time frame to have a look at this one and we can see here there is a really small bar on us here so the risk to reward on this is going to be really good so there's two there's two options with this okay you short that there stop loss goes there and you're going to have a really good risk to reward on this so that's option one or option two is you get triggered in and then triggered out very quickly there's with with a small entry like this the the probability of of something like this not happening it's quite simple so there's literally going to be two outcomes you're either going to get triggered in and triggered out or this is probably going to go on hr three to one very very quickly okay that's generally with these with these really small trades with their really small entry and um, but sometimes sometimes these are the best ones to, to trade because once they take off they go very very quickly in your in your in your direction now the next question i suppose is that look we've had a really big bar is that now the beginning of the next movement to the upside and if that happens, it'd be very nice if this just set continued going up, that it didn't come down trigger saying and, and this went up, that it just continued going up straight away. And we're wrong, it didn't trigger us in. But let's see, let's see what happens on this. But there is a potential trade there short. You have the overall momentum. We've had a pullback there. Yes, it's a it's one day pullback, it's a bounce and it's retest. So there is a potential trade to the downside on that. Annoyingly on the German DAX got triggered in and then triggered out quite quickly on this one. Got triggered out quite quickly. Um, the, if you're using a trailing stop, you would have got stopped out at about 0.7% because it went down in our favor and then turned around a little bit. So depending on where you, what you did, whether you got a trailing stop or a stop, you would have lost 07 or a full 1%. But again, was it a high probability trade? No. Have we got this sort of sideways movement? Yes. And then look, we've had one, two, three, four days of buying power on the German DAX. Now, are we looking the shortest? There is a trend line there. Are we looking the shortest? In my opinion, no, absolutely not. There is a trend line there. I'm not looking the shortest at the moment. And um, no, leave it alone. Let it come up to here, which I still wouldn't look to short it. Let it come up to this sort of horizontal here, and then I can we could potentially look to short that. So that's where that's come off of. It's come off a decent area. Um, let it run the whole way up to here before we're looking at it. But again, if you expect this to continue running, you could potentially jump down to the smaller time frame and look to take it. All we're looking for is a phase two, and then we're looking for the bounce. But where's the phase two going to come back to and potentially through that area there? We have a couple little bounces here, another one there, another one there. But again, it's not, it's not brilliant. Yes, there is a potential of a reversal there. But again, it's not, it's not. It's not that high probability trade. It's not that one that's massively jump around or this, if that makes sense. It's one that, for me, it's in no man's land. Stay away from it. French CAC, similarly to the DAX, popped up. Again, when it gets to this level here, this area, that's where I'd expect to see some sort of resistance. 
some sort of a potential push to the downside. But other than that, I wouldn't be looking to I wouldn't be looking to trade this. China and again this bar here, this level, this entry here is huge. Uh, again, it's definitely not something we would have looked at. But again, it came down here to the double bottom, well, a quadruple bottom, and then turned around again. Look, um, entry probably there, which means you're slightly higher up on this. But again, it's not something that we would have taken, but there was a trade there. Aussie 200. So the Aussie 200 went down to a 1.5%. So depending on uh, how you manage this, um, I managed this with a trading stop loss. So I actually took half a percent out of it. And then with the 0.7% loss on the other one, it's, um, which means then that I actually end up down on 0.2% on the two trades. Uh, but well done, anyone who, who took this short. It then had a complete change of direction turned around, and then popped back up again. Japan 225. So never got triggered in here on this long. The Japan 225 is the only one that hasn't, that hasn't triggered off, hasn't taken off to the upside. So NASDAQ has popped up. S&P has popped up, Dow has popped up, UK 100 has popped up, Germans popped up, French popped up, China's popped up, Aussies popped up, Japan 225 is the only one that hasn't moved. Okay, now there are a couple of things that are going on here. You do have a potential double bottom here. It is bouncing off a 50 moving average. Um, other than that, there's no real reasons to actually buy this at this present moment in time. But the question is, is, is that is that good enough? Look, bounce, retest, bounce again. Or are you looking at this and going, Henry, this is uh, a lower high. This is definitely not something for me. Are you looking at a long position? Entry there. Stop loss below it. Or potentially below there. And then going from there. There's your 1.3 to 1. Or are you someone who's a little greedier? And then that's a, almost a 2 to 1. Or are you just wanting to stay away from this? So there is a potential trade there. But again, is it off the best level in the world? No. Is it off the best area in the world? No. Is it a potential trade? Yes, it is. So oil broke through that little bit of resistance there. And it looks like it's it's continued. Question is, is now where is that gonna where's that gonna reject? Is it gonna reject this level? Or is it going to go back up into this area up here, into this sort of zone, um, into this sort of place where we're looking, getting rid of the ATR? Uh, is that going to pull back into this level here? And that's sort of the question we're looking at at the moment, whether it is or it isn't. But only time will tell. If it is at that particular point, then brilliant. We're, we're looking to trade this. We're looking for it to, uh, to have a reversal at that point. But... Again, even on the smaller time frames, I wouldn't be looking at this because it's just massively overextended. And um, we have no sort of real pullbacks. There's sort of the next area to pull back to. If it pulls back, back to there. And if it pulls back to there, you have a potential trade. But again, it's not it's not one of these must trades. So if it comes back to there look to take that but again it's not something that's hugely jumping out of me natural gas
we've got into this little consolidation here, into this little sideways movements. It's come back into this level, had a tiny little pop to the upside. See this triple top one, two, it's hit its head there again. There is a potential short on this now. The only problem is today's bar is pretty big. Relatively speaking. And if you're trading that, you'd want that to be about there somewhere. And that would be uh 2.4 to 1. But again, the safe the, the stop loss is not massively safe, even if even if this is the ideal place will be to put your stop loss there. And that would give you a one-to-one -one trade. Oh, that's what that's what's going on there. Question is now will will natural gas continue to drop? Wheat. Uh wheat wanted it to bounce off here. It just continued drop in. Um Problem is, is there's there is levels and stuff down here, but it's which particular level do we look at? There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. That's probably the best one, if I'm being honest. Uh, one, two, three touches, four, five, six. But the most recent one is there. But we'll be interested to see what happens whether it bounces there or here. But again, in this bigger scenario, it's not even on my radar. It's not even on the same playing field. So Platinum... This one went down, hit a one to one, pulled double bottomed, and then we wanted it to pull back. And that's exactly what it's done here. It's now done, pulled back quite nicely uh, back into this area. So that's where that's on one touch, two touches, three touches from above. And that's where that is. Now, again, if we look to trade this, this would have to be a, a four hour trade. If you're looking at this as a short, entry below that bar, you'd have to put your stop loss above it. And would I be looking to go lower than this? Probably not. I wouldn't probably be looking to go any lower than that. Let me pop back up to the daily chart. So we're looking for the next phase one to the downside on this. But again, pretty big bar today. There is a potential trade there as a one-to-one. -one. Um, no, not massively, not massively jumped on me either. Poppers had a little pop to the upside as well here. So we've actually made higher highs and higher lows here. Um. If we look at this, would not, not anything that is worth looking at, if I'm being honest. This one here went up, hit here, came down, triggered you in, and then triggered you out quite quickly. Deletes. So the next area for that too is there, somewhere around there. But again, it's not it's not a it's not a huge level. It's not a it's not one of those massive places that we're going, oh, this is definitely something we need to get in on. Yes, the trend is down. Um, so it'll be interesting to see because a lot of these precious metals have had this spike to the upside today. Uh no coincidence with the uh, with the weakness in the dollar. So sugar. <clears throat> This trade is pending. Uh, I need to delete this on eToro now. 
it is now broken. Uh, it's broken my stop loss, which means then the analysis here is is not correct. So I'm gonna I'm gonna close that trade. Um, but I was sitting there for one, two, three, four, five, and today is day six. So it's now going to be it's now going to be closed. So get rid of that. Elite. Okay. Um, we wanted it to come back to here. And then from there, it just literally moved sideways. Hasn't hasn't done anything there. Look at the four hour. Uh, I thought it was going to be a descending triangle, but it, it just moved sideways. It just moved sideways. So again, I sort of stay away from it. I'll quickly go over to these three here before I go into the stocks. So silver had a massive pop to the upside today on the back of the back of the of dollar weakness. Massive pop today. And again, can we trade this? Not really, not this not really giving us an indication that that's going to pop. I don't see any any indication there. It's moved sideways, 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 and then had a spike today. That was based what was happening. Same with same with gold. Okay, same with gold. This trade here is that was that a trade? Uh, I would have taken no. Was it a high probability trade? No, but it was moving sideways, and we got the breakout correct. Problem is, is that our stop loss was just too big. Our stop loss on this was massive. So this only ever went half a percent in our favor. And it's not something we ever want to play out. But I'll leave it there until it either hits a stop loss or it comes down and hits its profit. Uh, I'll leave it there to see how it actually plays out. If we look at the dollar, that's a bit of shameful reading there for the dollar. Like that. We wanted it to come down to here. And look, we just have had one, two, three, four, five huge selling days. Look, only one of the days had any bit of a, a, a rejection there. See this? You now day three here. It had a it was the only one with a bit of with a bit of um a rejection or any sort of entry point was there. That was it on that pullback. Other than that, it is just gone like a rocket. So the next the next trade on this is is probably somewhere around here. Let it one more selling day and then come back down or come back. And then once it comes back, then we jump in the next wave of, of sellers. That's that's literally what we're looking for now at the moment. So did anyone anyone take this trade? So Henry took the trade. Okay. Uh, I took it myself and I got triggered in. Do I want to be triggered into it? Probably not. Uh, am I happy to be triggered into it? No. But it's there in a minute. Uh, I'm there in a minute. Is it a valid trade? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It is valid. It meets my rules. It's trending. The only difference is, is that it's, it's actually too overextended. But on the good side is, is if the news is good and the stock market is expected to go up, Apple will probably continue. Apple will more than likely continue. Also, it has its earnings coming out on the 3rd of August. What, in two weeks, two and a half weeks? And it's had two bad earnings since 2016, which is what well, since 2013 it's had two bad earnings. So you'd expect earnings to be to be good on the back of it as well. So is it an ideal trade? No. 
Well, whatever about seeing a bigger bar today, I wanted to see today's bar up here. I wanted to see it. Uh, I wanted to see it. Um, so I wanted to see it close up here. So going up and then and then closing down here, it doesn't. It doesn't fill me with joy, if that makes sense. I wanted to see it pop up, and I want to see that close up here somewhere the top half of that bar, which again, then gives it momentum. It gives it validity. It gives it, whereas here, it's, yes, it went up and it closed here, but it's, it still hasn't moved anywhere and we're in the trade. So, but again, ideally the stop loss should be down here, but I wasn't prepared to put a stop loss down there. So if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be too annoyed over it. It's not like the. It's not like the friggin' McDonald's trade that I'm absolutely still sick over. Um, but it is what it is. Facebook. Facebook. We wanted to pull back here, but it's no coincidence that has had two buying days, two pretty bullish days off the back of the. the what was it seventy million people sign up to trades? Um. So yeah. I've looked, there's no no coincidence that that has just just popped. Um question is is when will it when will it stop? When will it get some sort of a breeder? Um and that's just a matter of a matter of when we're going to get some sort of pullback on it. It's how deep and how quick. Microsoft. So again, we talked about this particular trade here on Microsoft. It gapped up. Um, would you be triggered in? Yes, you would be triggered in. It'd be gapped up, triggered you in, and then sort of went up. And now it's come back down. So it's literally just on the it's literally just on the open and the close. Now again, this has had some good news. Anyone that's that's been living in a cave probably doesn't know about it. Arnold popped it up here in the in the actual group here that their Microsoft wins the US court uh, wins US court not to buy Activision um, in loss to FTC ruling allows Microsoft to close deal ahead of their July the 18th deadline okay so it gives them a go ahead now for anyone who again has been living in a cave these guys are these guys are, are huge. These guys are the ones that these ones are the the ones who do Call of Duty. They have sort of a monopoly on the market there, and it's something that they were sort of corner in the market. That's why, and that's why they were sort of that's why the court case was was hired. But obviously, they won it. But again, is that going to be good for them, or is it going to be good for? What's it? Activision. What's their What's their ticket? Bear with me. We have a look at them. Anyone? Anyone jump in on this? So look, it's been moving sideways, moving sideways, and then all of a sudden, once yesterday's news come out, bosh. Um, but what would have happened is a lot of people would have got in today. A lot of people would have got in today, and if you got in today, if if it goes up, you'll be quite lucky. You'll be quite lucky. Probably something. Is probably very good for these guys. It's probably going to make them massively profitable. But again, it's 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 going to be a long term sort of thing as well, isn't it? Microsoft, sorry, Amazon. Amazon has Amazon Prime Day today and yesterday, which is it gives people Amazon Prime deliveries without without the cost. And you also get, I think, get a big discount as well. So it's their drive to have loads of people or sign up and and use the 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 actual delivery service. 
but again, it makes no real difference to the actual stock price. Um, it has been pretty flat through this area, even though it's gone up. It's been pretty flat. These bars are all sort of clubbed together. You have one day movement, look, one day movement down. You had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sideways. You had one move up, and then you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen days sideways. So it's not something that's it's not something that jumps out at me here. Absolutely not. Google. So we talked about this potential trade here and um, got triggered in here. We had two buy selling days and then today we had a little pop to the upside as well. And um, again, it's a matter of did we give it enough of a stop loss? And is the market going to continue? If the market continues to the upside, you'd expect Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, um, Amazon, Google, Netflix and Tesla. You'd expect most of those to continue going up. Um, they have to go up for the for the market share of the of the Nasdaq. There, if they go up, the Nasdaq goes up. And throat. Netflix. Anyone who bought Netflix off the back of this, what do you one percent up? Yeah, just about one percent up here at the moment. I believe that there are three. And um, if I'm being honest, I would have my stop loss inside break even at the moment, and then let it. Let it move, let it go where it's going. Might even might even have my might I might even have my stop loss just there, if I'm being honest. Tesla, if we look at this, Tesla came back and actually closed that gap. Look, literally closed that gap there two days ago, and now we had a little pop to the upside again on this, but. It's after closing a gap, which will, which generally happens with stocks. Stocks like to close gaps for some reason or another, and um, it just closed that one. Let's see now will it will it continue the upside? Same as the rest of them there. Lululemon is has got back to that one, two, three, four. It's now touching it a fifth time. So the question is: Are we finally going to break out to the upside, or? Is this now going to be a short position again? There's the high stop loss. Okay, so then we have here, there's a low, higher low, higher low. So if we look at these higher lows, they are getting higher. So it's telling us this is probably going to break through there. But again, we don't have any crystal ball, but that's what that's what these high low higher lows are telling us. So you'd expect that to break out and then retest. And then when it finally does, the next level is probably about the 410 mark there. That's the next level. So if it breaks out, it has it has a nice little bit of movement, a nice little run to go on that. McDonald's, pretty flat. It is coming back up to that. <laughs> Going back up into that triple top there again. Similar question. When it hits that triple top, are we going to get a retest, a, re a rejection of that? Where you'd expect it to go up and re reject this. Um, question is, is because these lows are getting higher, is it going to break a retest or hit there and come back down? Um, I'd probably expect it to come back down once more and then finally break through. But we'll we'll see how the market plays out on this. NVIDIA, um, anyone who bought that stock there, yeah, it's running. If you put your stop loss underneath there, you're just about a one, one up. If you left it there below this low, you're slightly up 0.2%. And um, but is this an end a good entry? No, it's a horrible entry. Is this where we should be trading from? No, it's not. But again, it was a trade there. Uh was quite confident that this would go up. The question is now is how far, how far it's at that double top. And I'd expect it to break it. I don't expect a massive rejection unless 
unless we get a, a massive or unless we get a, a rejection across the board. If we get a rejection on the NASDAQ, S&P and the Dow, then obviously I want to say that I say and Microsoft, Amazon, um, Netflix, Google, uh, Facebook, then you're going to get a pullback in this as well. But other than that, I'd actually expect this to continue going. AMD, again, it's slightly in profit at the minute. It didn't come back to this horizontal level, so it wasn't an ideal, it wasn't an ideal entry either. And um, we we put it there on the off chance that it wouldn't come back, and it doesn't look like it. It's going to come back. It looks like it's going to slowly keep meandering up to the high upwards. But if that does, then brilliant, grand. If it comes back down to here and then takes off again, it's also grand. It's just a little bit longer than expected. Crocs. That little a hole and um, stopped us out here. Turn around now, sort of taken off. So leave that alone and let it break and retest. There's that level there. Oh, that. Bounce. Bounce, bounce. So, well, let's see what happens there. But if it breaks and retest, there is a potential hop to the upside on this as well. And um, so, this is one that uh, Tom put in the group. If I'm, if if I'm correct, Tom. So almost hits, almost hit the uh, one to one risk reward on this one here. If you took this one, you were sworn up 2.4. But again, with the likes of this, I actually expect this to go on and then hit this. I expect this to hit our three to one. I expect this to I expect this to go. I don't expect um the trend. I don't expect the trend to not move. You took profit around the 70 mark. Yeah, but looking at the trend and look what's going on there, we, we are breaking this high. We're, we're making higher highs, so I'd expect it to go back and hit into this level here again. Uh, for As a, an underlying asset, I'd like to have a big sell-off on this. I'd like to have it sell off somewhere down to here and then buy it up again as an underlying asset. That would be the, that would be the ideal scenario. Um, but again, if you're making profit on it, who really cares whether it's an underlying asset or whether it's a CFD? Well, probably CFD is better because it's going to make you more money over that same period of time, if I'm being honest. But yeah, well done on that one. It's running quite nicely. There's a couple of trades on it. Uh, if you've taken this one, which was the latest entry on it, when we saw it, you almost got the one to one. If you got it in here where you yeah, had a correct entry, you'd probably have a two or even three to one on it at the minute. Moderna. So Moderna has come down and hit that horizontal level that I was talking about. It's been triggered in here as a, as a, as a limit order. And it's now a little question of how far this is going to pop. So I put a three to one on it there. But it is at the minute up 07 percent. So it'll be interesting to see is Moderna strong enough to have an actual proper bounce off this, or is it not? Okay. Um looking at the momentum and the trend, I actually doubt it. I expect it to drop down. So if you took this one here. I'd have my stop loss moved inside break even, and then I physically can't lose in this trade. Um, and if it pops up, then you're absolutely got the very, very bottom of the very low of it. Um, but looking at the trend, looking at cyclicity, looking at momentum, I expect this to go down. It's very different to this momentum. It just continued dropping, hit the floor, and then bounced up. This one, making lower highs, lower lows. Can we look at end phase, please? Yes, of course we can. Uh, same with this one. 
it moved down very quickly. This one moved down very quickly. This one was a little bit slower. We actually had cyclicity coming down, but this one's making lower highs, lower lows. I'd expect it to break through here. And phase I assume you're looking at this as a double bottom. Tom. My thing with end phase and always has been end phase is last period of bad bad revenue or bad earnings was 16 to end of 17. Since 2018, it's just been a sea of green. You had the one earnings in 2019 that was bad. Everything else has been pretty good. So end phase is one of these ones that I'm happy for you guys to be in this now, but ideally here will be the area to jump in on it. There would be the They'd be the, there'd be the place to actually get it. It's very different to Solar's Edge. Solar's Edge has never really been profitable. It has one month profitable, one quarter, then one bad, one quarter good, one quarter bad. But for me, the ideal scenario would be here as the entry. So don't be afraid to put an order there at 116 and just get triggered in as the underlying asset. But again, this could be the beginning of this upper momentum. Um, and as a CFD, Probably not. If you're trading as a CFD, you really want to sort of trade it this way. Entry above that high, stop loss below that low. And, and that's a horrible, horrible entry on that. You'd have to hold on to that for months to do that. You might as well hold on to the underlying asset. Uh, that point's 149. Where is it there? 180 up to here $120 plus you might as well you might as well get in as a as online as a long underlying asset you've almost well you wouldn't have always made as much you would have made three times more here in this one but again the the risk of being stopped out is quite high if you do that as a CFD um but end phase has always been one of those ones that's done extremely well for us so when we're earning season is going to start off next week. Does anyone know what the, the first part of um what part of earning season is? What's the first part of it? Absolutely, Tom. Thanks. So banks are something that we are potentially going to have a quick look at here and see what's going on, see what's what's going on. So banks is the first part. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of these. <clears throat> UBS. It is being pretty flat. Been pretty flat and look at 25th of July. So in two weeks' time, we have earnings coming out on the likes of this. So it's been pretty flat, hasn't really gone anywhere, hasn't done anything. Earnings, earnings here have been negative. And they're expecting earnings to be similar to the last quarter. But if you look at the at the three, the last four quarters, earnings hasn't moved. We expected them to be well on the same lines. If I pop this up to the weekly and have a look at the earnings, um, earnings is actually above where price is at the minute. Okay, I wasn't actually expecting that. Um, if I'm being honest, I wasn't actually expecting that, but yes, there is. DNP, similarly again, look massively sideways. Massively sideways again. 
no real momentum, no real trend, no real, no real nothing at the minute, is there? Hernans again has is what that about 12 pound quid a share above where it's supposed to be. HSBC. HSBC is the only one that seems to be seems to be running in any way well. Okay, so it seems the only one that seems to be running anyway, the way it should be. We are getting higher highs. We are getting higher lows. Now they're they're doing a bit of a, a restructure at the minute. Connect. They are doing a bit of a restructure at the minute, and their headquarters in in London is is um, Canary Wharf. They've actually pulled the plug on the lease on that. And they're handing it, they're handing the keys back. Which means is that they they are doing a little bit of cost cutting at the moment. Um with the work from home and all that sort of stuff. They're seeing more value in a lot of the, the back ends of the of the banks all work from home. So they don't need that big fancy swanky building in the likes of Canary Wharf anymore. So that is that is sort of potentially changing there. But this one seems to be running it, it's in this level here this area so I'd like to see a break and retest and if that happened potentially a potential buy on that uh, bank of Nosha scotia um absolutely again sideways not going anywhere jp morgan now there's no there's no coincidence the likes of JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs generally do well. Why? Because they have the investment arm and um, the investment arm as well, which is which is hugely profitable for them. Okay. We do have we do have a soft level there. Literally true that there it moves sideways and it is now broken out of that. So that is actually a little bit of good news that it probably means that the earnings that are coming out in two days is probably going to be expected to be a little bit better than expected, if that makes sense. That comes back down to here. There is a potential pop to the upside. But again, it has to be substantial for this to move. It has to be significant for it to move. Seven. 16 and then 20 percent so the earnings are actually getting bigger quarter on quarter it'll be interesting to see if the same thing happens there goldman sachs again earnings and um, next wednesday this one also has been pretty flat and um, jp morgan is, is probably a better trend And the last one, Morgan Stanley. So similar. So the two best ones is HSBC and Goldman Sachs. Let me have a quick look up at the earnings and see how the earnings stack up. Okay, so they had a massive drop down on their earnings last quarter. And um, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. Oh wow, Sachs's earnings. We're actually below price. JP Morgan again, similar with JP Morgan. Bank of Nova Scotia, up to the upside, and HSBC. Okay, HSBC earnings have turned the corner and they're starting to make money again. It was a big jump. It was a big jump from there to there on the earnings. So 
that's something to be aware of. And that gives us a little understanding of how, how banks are getting on. And that will then give us a little bit of an understanding of how economies are generally doing on. What's the story with, with money, with checking accounts? Have people got savings? Have people grown their savings over the last quarter or have they diminished? So that will be sort of a little bit of a, a telling sign of what we'd expect to see over the next over the next couple of over the next couple of weeks with earnings. So the banks give us a little sort of a little sort of insight into that. Whereas if people's checking accounts in the US have gone up, there's savings there, you expect more free cash to be spent around. If their the checking accounts are down, if the debt has gone up, if there's more people borrowing on credit cards, stuff like that there, they'd have less money to spend on the likes of the apples of this world and stuff like that, which potentially could slow down their earnings. Okay. Okay, everyone, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Hope you all have a lovely evening. And I will speak to you all on um, tomorrow. Just to give you a little heads up, again, uh, the website is down at the minute. Rishi is working on it. I may just put this on YouTube so you guys can actually just watch it on YouTube. Um, but we'll see what I can do tonight because there's no point in putting it on the website because these guys can't watch it. So I may just pop it up on YouTube and then. Uh, and then you guys can watch it there or anyone. Well, you guys have watched it already, but any of the other people. Um, all right, everyone, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.